Hey everybody, it's raining here in Sebastopol. I'm stuck inside. It's a beautiful day. Got my hot cup of tea here. Got this journal that I just filled, and I'm gonna share it with you page by page. So this is the longer video for those of you who are really nerdy. And there's a shorter video if you want to see that. Check out my Instagram. Every time I fill one of these up, I like to do a flip through. Partly for myself, I can look back later, but just to show people, a lot of people ask what I've been up to, so um, I think this journal I finished uh, sort of in the middle of November, and it's December now, and I did go back and keep trying to fill in a lot of pages, so I'm pretty happy with where this one's at right now, and I started getting precious with it a little bit towards the end, which is always a problem, so... Um, I did fill the front cover here and the first page with a big spread and more of a... I used some ink. I haven't been using that much ink lately, so that was a fun art piece to do there. The very first uh, nature journaling trip that I did with this sketchbook was back in August, actually. So August 12th, and we went out to the coast at Bodega Head. It was really fun. I had a great time drawing. There was a lot of really interesting insects that were coming to this California buckwheat, but some of this is kind of pale. It was a very sunny day and quite warm. Um, carnivorous plants, of course, and I also started going back at a certain point when I filled so many of the pages, I started going back and doing my, I started my nature journaling every day, and I was going back and filling in even little gaps, so this was actually done much later, but I went back and filled in. So that's something people always wonder about is, do you have to stick to a straight chronological pattern? And no, I actually skip around. This is a piece that you've probably seen some pictures of on my Instagram, if you follow me on Instagram. I actually talked about it a little bit in a video, because on this piece, I actually... This was back when I got surgery on my right hand and I was at my mechanics in the waiting room and I had a cast on my right hand for uh, my wrist surgery. And so I started, I was reading a Joseph Campbell book and I started doing some sketching with my left hand, which is not that uncommon. I often do my layouts with my left hand. And so I started this drawing in the office of my mechanics. But this is something that I did talk about the process a little bit before. I got to a point where I was getting a little bit too precious with it and I was happy enough with the composition that I was afraid to keep pushing the values with the watercolor. But part of my practice has been to try to go beyond my comfort zone. And so I kept working on it and yeah, you can see where it's at now. Uh, more of my daily journaling practice and I do a I do some gratitude in the morning and a couple other prompts. I'm actually working on making a journal. If you're interested in starting a morning journaling practice, I spend about um, 7 to 15 minutes every morning as part of my morning routine. I do these certain prompts and I repeat them every morning um, with new things that I'm grateful for and some ideas about the day, but it's just a way to get me started for the day. I'm actually going to make a journal with those prompts in it. Um, so if you're interested in that, stay tuned. Um, here's some notes from an awesome uh, book that I was reading by Viktor Frankl. Um, so another composition. I never really went further with this one. Here's another nature journaling trip um, in September out to... So you can see this whole part was just in one month. I wasn't filling things up very fast. And, this was out at the Elk Preserve. It was really fun to see the elk out there. I actually got to make two trips out there. I usually make two trips to the Elk Preserve every fall during the rut. And this year I was actually going to make three, but the third one got canceled because of the smoke. Here's some more pictures of elk. As you can see, their animals are moving, so I have to do these rather fast sketches and try to just get the overall feeling of it um, before they move. Here's a landscape from out there at Point Reyes, the Elk Preserve. I really like the, the composition of this particular landscape. I did sketch at the Heirloom Expo. The uh, National Heirloom Expo is a place where people bring all kinds of weird fruit and vegetables and talk about organic gardening and 
heirloom seeds and stuff like that. It's a pretty cool event and there's tons of pumpkins and squash. So I like to go there and draw because it's really good practice. Um, these were some gourds, warty gourds, and I didn't, this wasn't quite nature journaling. You can see that I'm not really asking. Like on this page, there's no, this almost, this isn't really nature journaling here on this page. This is more like sketching, even though some of the skills that I'm practicing here will apply to my nature journaling. This page by itself, I would not consider a nature journal page. I had to get a sip of my tea there. That's what the slurping is about, but... Anyways, there's all kinds of weird colors and shapes, so it is really good practice for drawing things, and it's also one of those situations where it's easy to feel uncomfortable. There's a ton of people, it's noisy, it's, there's no places to sit down, um, and there's people coming up to you, asking you what you're doing, looking at your drawings, critiquing your drawings, or giving you un... Un unsolicited feedback. How do you feel about unsolicited feedback? And the shapes are really weird and challenging. So I like that. It's definitely outside my comfort zone, but good practice. Um, here's the last page from that trip. But um, when I was doing my everyday nature journaling practice, which thanks to Fiona, I started doing that because normally I nature journal maybe once a week or four times a month when I'm at home, but when I'm on an expedition, I'll nature journal every day or when I'm traveling. But this time, I decided to make a commitment to nature journal every day no matter what, even if it was just for a short amount of time. Like, I don't have to go somewhere special. I would even do it at home. So here's one example where there were some turkeys that I could see right outside my window doing a dust bath. And so I actually learned some new things about how they dust bathe during this drawing, and I made a short video about that on Thanksgiving. So more of my morning journaling practice. Here's more from the uh, Heirloom Expo. These were some really weirdly shaped tomatoes, and so that's a good example. Tomatoes and squash and things like that, they're not wild plants, but what is the definition of nature? So if you're somewhere where you're presented with a bunch of domesticated plants, I think that you can draw them and practice nature journaling them also. In this case, I wasn't really asking questions or using much of a nature journaling perspective, so this is still just kind of drawing. Um, I had a little bit more fun on this side. Um, more of my personal uh, journaling practice. Here was a second trip out to the um, elk preserve, and we learned a lot about grasses. And so these grasses were tricky to draw, but I just, you know, Got them quickly sketched in there. Lots of questions on this page. Here I was just doing a study of the antlers because sometimes you find something that's really challenging to draw. And you can see here when I tried to do a more complex drawing showing the animals, the antlers were probably the most challenging part. So I decided, okay, instead of just avoiding the antlers, I could have just drawn the cow elk without antlers. But instead, I decided I'm just going to focus on drawing as many antlers as I can on this page. And that's that iteration that I'm so excited about these days. So practicing something over and over again is the best way to get good at it. And it's uncomfortable at first, but find those things that are difficult for you to draw. And by drawing them, this is like visual problem solving. You're using your hand, you're using your eyes, and you're repeating, repeatedly trying and trying until you get better at something. Another trip to California carnivores. You all know that I love going to that place. It's really fun. Um, this was funny. This frog was very difficult for me to draw. Something about the angles of it were challenging. Also, sometimes the way that their feet are tucked in underneath them when you draw it, it doesn't look real, even though that's what it actually looked like in real life. Western tree frog there. More personal journaling. Here was a uh, here's a good example of when I'm teaching. I often my nature journaling when I'm teaching is often less um, developed and more sketchy because I'm too busy um, talking to people and teaching that I uh, don't have that much time for my own pages. But this was at a class at the Monterey 
Bay Birding Festival, which was really awesome. And I was able to teach uh, two classes that originally were going to be taught by a Jack. And he wasn't able to make it, so I filled in for him. And the students were really great. And I had a great time with them. And we found a really good location for the outdoor segment of the class. And one of the most exciting parts was during, during that time, a peregrine falcon flew by. And so I actually got a journal. This is the third time that I have seen and journaled a peregrine falcon attack. And in this case, I think it was trying to go for a coot. And I didn't have that much time to draw it. Obviously, they move very fast. They're actually like one the fastest animal on the planet. And um, it was just really fun to at least try and to get like a little bit of what that silhouette looked like and to use some words. This is a good opportunity when you see an event like this, a good opportunity to use words um, instead of drawings because it can be faster. And here's a good example of how even a small amount of information, like what is the minimal thing that you can do that actually creates an interesting piece of information. So this little thumbnail right here is very small. It's only like two and a half inches by one inch, but it conveys a landscape and a red tail hawk in soaring up there. So try to practice doing small things like that. It's easy and you get feedback faster instead of trying to do a really big landscape, which you're more likely to fail, get frustrated and you won't be able to complete as many because they take so much more time. Um, here's a good example of the opposite. So I went to Bodega Dunes and I ended up doing, this is a pretty big, for me this is a pretty big landscape and it took a lot longer and I ran into a lot more frustrations. I made a video about this so check out the video where I go more into detail about the process behind this landscape but it wasn't super easy. And I think this was on that same day there were some turkey vultures. And this is a good example of how a bird that, if I were just a naturalist or a birder, I would probably pass up a turkey vulture and not be that interested in it. But I decided to try to draw it and nature journal it. And so I ended up with lots of interesting questions and observations and things that I learned while observing these turkey vultures, which are kind of a boring bird in our area because they're so common. Here's some more sort of mindset journaling. Um, some goals I created. This was during mentoring that I did. And here's back at California Carnivores, but this time I'm drawing bromeliads. So these bromeliads are really cool. I tried drawing Spanish moss, but it's a very pale color and very trippy plant actually, Spanish moth. It's also a bromeliad. Um, here's some more journaling and just um, free drawing practice. Uh, this is more nature journaling. So for my daily nature journaling, because I've been forced to nature journal every day, I've had to sometimes nature journal at home once it was dark outside. And luckily, I have a couple terraria and I have some frogs and lizards. And so it's easy to nature journal at home when you have a terrarium because, yeah, it's just you have nature inside of your house. So during this, I was, I was comparing the eyes of the frog and the lizard and learned some interesting things, or at least asked some interesting questions. So I've been getting a lot of practice the last few months on that. This was fun. I was at jury duty, and... Um, during the break at jury duty, I drew this plant, and uh, it was just interesting being at jury duty and having my nature journal with me it was very nice because a lot of the people there were very negative, and you don't have control of your time while you're there, so it's important opportunity to focus on like what things you do have control over, like your mindset. Here's some nature journaling I did about a tarantula, because I actually have a tarantula in a terrarium too that I'm house-sitting this tarantula. Here's another nature journaling trip. This one was to Helen Putnam Regional Park. Um, actually, this was a scouting mission. I went on a scouting mission the first time. Here's another good example of how a very small composition can contain a lot of information. So this is a path, a little landscape, and there's a doe and a buck, two deer both feeding next to the trail. And I had some interesting questions about why they were grazing so close to the road. 
and I also noticed some of these different pollinators on the buckwheat. The California buckwheat was really beautiful. So this is the fall. Um, this was in October. So in the fall, if you're in California, definitely look at the California buckwheat Areogonum uh, genus, and you'll find cool plants. Here is a quick tree sketch because I wanted to prepare for a class on um, helping people draw trees that following um, weekend. Here are some of the, the sketches that I did to help people understand how to simplify drawing trees and how to show, to create the illusion of three-dimensionality. Here are some different tachnid flies that we saw. That's the actual size of these flies. They're very interesting. Parasitoids. Here I tried doing a, a doing some measurements and counting numbers of birds and comparing them. Something I normally don't do. Um, this was sketch noting. I went to the Bioneers conference and I made a video about going to this conference, but Michael Pollan spoke, so I did some sketch noting. Sketch noting is basically when you are using words and images to record information instead of just using words. And during the talk, I would try to summarize the major points and create images such as this one. Here's death, and, uh, or I mean a skull, and it's representing mortality. And you can use arrows, and you can use different um, fonts and stuff like that. This is a, a general view of the stage. So the Bioneers Conference is a pretty interesting place, and it was a good place to practice nature journaling. Uh, I also went, man, I went, I went to a lot of crazy places the last three months. So I also went to this reptile expo in Santa Rosa and there was chameleons and these are Argus monitors and a puff adder. So it's it's definitely an information dense place and it's not these are not these are not wild animals in nature, but nevertheless I think that's a good opportunity to practice nature journaling. Like I learned so much about chameleon feats and in this case um, compared to the Heirloom Expo, I would consider this nature journaling because here, for example, you can see I'm, instead of just drawing a portrait of the chameleon, I'm trying to understand the feet and I'm counting the toes and comparing the front and the back and I'm asking questions. So that is what makes nature journaling. Here's some more. And I also went to the Academy of Sciences, which was super cool. I went with uh, Tracy. She was really nice and got me in early for the member preview. And while we were watching the, the big tank that has the albino alligator in it, one of these snapping turtles came up and was sort of nuzzling the alligator's tail and then finally bit the tail. It was really funny. And you could tell that the tip of the tail has been bitten before. So here I was analyzing the tail a little bit, and I spent the whole day there. Here I was trying to draw some lobsters, which were difficult because they move a lot and have so many appendages. Um, yeah, I spent the whole day there. It was really fun. I love the flooded Amazon section. Uh, here was the California saltwater tank, which was cool. Very, I mean, very... Talk about information density. That's some information density right there. So this is a good example too. This part is right here. This isn't to this isn't exactly nature journaling by it in in and of itself. This is sort of a portrait of an ecosystem with a lot of different animals going on, but there's not really there's not really an inquiry going on or a communication of specific information. There's not information about these different fish or questions about these fish or these invertebrates or observations or like, you know, I could have a, a blowout bubble here showing a close up of one of these fish or have my questions inside of a little box. That would make that more nature journaling. This is sort of just a portrait of that ecosystem. Combined with some of this other stuff, I would consider it nature journaling, but in and of itself, not exactly. This, on the other hand, is much more 
of a nature journaling approach, you can see that I'm comparing some of these cichlids. I was curious which ones uh, were different or if they were different species. Um, I also noticed that they were protecting small babies, or they seem to be. I asked questions um, uh, and made some sort of hypotheses. That's a little bit more of a nature journaling perspective, I would say. This was uh, that same day I went to see Fiona and Jack speak at the Foster Museum, which was awesome. And she talked about her practice of nature journaling and how she's filled a thousand pages in two years. So you can see here that I was um, sketchnoting. I drew the pile of books. But a lot of this is actually just note taking with a little bit more of an organization and some block letters mixed in. But I did you know, incorporate some drawings and stuff like that. And that's where I made the commitment. So that was on, that was on October 22nd. So I've definitely been nature journaling every day for more than a month because today is December 4th. And um, yeah, so I'm glad that was the day that I, the night that I made the commitment. And my, the very next day, I think, no, this was actually a little bit later. You can see that this is one of my, uh, nature journaling days and I did try to do a little um, chart here showing what pollinators came but even a, a something as simple as this is I'm counting as a nature journal for the day here's another one this was really cool because this was the first day after Fiona's talk and you can see that I'm using some metacognitive stuff in here um, instead of just paying attention to nature it's good to include yourself as subject matter so here I have a little person with a thought bubble saying, why have I never nature journaled here before? And this is at my house in the backyard. So even though I've lived here for five years, I've never nature journaled here. And because I committed to this daily nature journaling practice, it forced me just logist on a logistical side to nature journal at home more. I counted which birds I saw and where they were landing and how many times. Got to practice drawing hummingbirds in flight. So that was great. Um, back to California carnivores. Here's a little bit more of a species portrait. There's definitely a nature journaling component. And then I went home and looked up a map of Southwest Australia where this particular type of climbing sundew lives. And I tried to draw a little map there showing it. But here's the page, one of the most important things that you can see on this page is the way that it divided the space. So you can see that I use these boxes and I think one of the, the, the easiest ways to create an interesting aesthetic in your nature journal or any kind of art is to divide the space in an interesting way. So just by using boxes like this and arrows, you can kind of, it's kind of like a cheating way without the drawings necessarily being spectacular, you can still make the page look interesting. There's like a cumulative effect there. Um, here's some more. Here's some orchids. These were some really interesting orchids that I was trying to draw. Orchids are always weird. You can see I have some close-ups in there and questions and sort of hypotheses about these orchid shapes. This one was really awesome, but difficult to draw. Um, the next day I did this salvia. This was at work, so I actually ended up having to nature journal after a long day of work. Um, I usually want to just go straight home when I work at the nursery, but I stayed in nature journal. This blue whale skeleton was awesome. I got to go down to Santa Cruz for one of Jack's meetups. I'm sure some of you watching this video were at that trip, and we went to the Younger Lagoon. And there was this amazing actual blue whale skeleton that was all articulated there. And I would love to go back and draw it again because I tried to squeeze the biggest animal on the planet onto a small page. Sort of failed with that. Here are some more sketches from there. You can see I pushed the values. This is a good example that I'm getting better at pushing the values in my watercolors a little bit more. Um, some different cormorants and a rock. Here's some more of my nature daily nature journaling practice at home. I've been doing a lot more of these plants that grow in my garden. So this tobacco is a fascinating plant that brings in tons of pollinators. 
more of that same tobacco again the next day, a deer. Wow, I actually saw, this was awesome, I saw a fly land in this spider's web right in my windowsill, and that was a really fun process to Nature Journal about more hummingbirds. The hummingbirds are really, come really close to the window where I can Nature Journal from. Another trip to California carnivores, just practicing pushing those values, which is very challenging with those carnivorous plants and in this case you can see these are portraits I would say I this page by itself I would not really consider nature journaling it's kind of just botanical illustration and a little bit on the sketchy side so maybe you could call them studies and those studies could inform my nature journaling but this by itself might not really be uh, much nature journaling. You, you're you not really, this is not a process of inquiry here. Besides the sort of visual problem solving, there's not much transparency in the problem solving and the inquiry. And I think that's what makes nature journaling. Um, here's some more. Here's a good example. This is definitely nature journaling. There's a bunch of questions. They're showing things from different angles. Questions about how on these hummingbirds, it would be really easy to paint the whole head pink on the annas. But depending on the angle that they're looking at you from, sometimes those parts are dark. Because like you may know, I think this is why the there's not actual pigments in their, in their faces. It's a reflection effect. So it has to do with how the sun's hitting them. Here you can see I did a thing where I tried to understand how bees fit into these tobacco flowers and how far they fit in when they're going for that nectar. And then here's the last, the very last page in my journal. I did a map of my garden and I compared a bullfrog with a western tree frog, which was very fun joint comparison. And then on this smoky day, and I made a video of this that you can watch on my YouTube channel, but the smoke was so bad outside, this was on November 10th, I ended up nature journaling inside and what I did is I just cut up an apple and I asked different questions and you can see this is definitely nature journaling even though this is not a wild fruit and it was inside my house this is more nature journaling than some of the other ones because you can see that the process of how I'm asking questions and the line of inquiry and the different ways of showing and the experimentation I think that's really what makes nature journaling so that was the absolute last page this book pretty much got filled, like there's almost no empty spaces in this entire thing, so I'm pretty proud of that. That's something that I'm actually going for these days. I'm proud of some of these other non-nature related drawings and some of these other art pieces like on the front page. And um, yeah, that is a full, complete journal. So. Just wanted to share that with all of you and to show you sort of what I think is the difference between nature journaling and other kinds of journaling and not from a judgmental way but I think it's important to try to understand like what exactly is nature journaling and what other forms of journaling are and I think a lot of times they do inform each other so even photography could inform your nature journaling but practicing a lot of different things in your journal is the way to go so I hope you enjoyed that. That's a little bit of my brain on paper. See you next time.